What are the key developments in mobile network architectures and technologies in 2022 from a major operator perspective? Well, to find out, I'm talking today with Arno Vampiris, Senior Vice President of Radio Access Networks and 5G Champion at Orange. Arno, thanks for joining us today. Pleasure to have you back. Um, so in general, do you think 5G is on track? Is it meeting your expectations? Thanks, Ray. Yes, uh, we are on track on, on 5G. We have been able to introduce 5G on the majority on our operation in, in Europe. Of course, we are still uh, awaiting some frequencies for some uh, countries uh, and as well for in Africa. Um, we have been able to uh, introduce 5G on our existing 4G sites, starting from urban and going progressively to suburban and rural areas and as well on, in some economical areas where we have put 5G uh, on the start. Uh, we have now a number of 5G uh, devices with a complete uh, portfolio, and we have more and more uh, offers where uh, our customer can benefit in their daily life on, on 5G. So yes, we are on track for uh, our strategic plan point of view. Okay, excellent. Well, I mean, it is still relatively early days for 5G, but as 5G evolves, there are going to be a lot of associated network architecture developments that will take place simultaneously, including the introduction of virtual RAN capabilities. And for VRAN to be a success, do operators like Orange need to have a distributed edge cloud architecture already in place? And if so, what does that look like for an operator such as Orange in a major market like France? Um, for Cloud Run, it's quite a, a long journey. Uh, of course, with a new core, we are distributing the core function on different data centers and more and more on different uh, edge data centers. But from the Cloud Run perspective, we are still under test. Why? Because we are, it's, it's a technology where you have two factors. The first one, you need to rewrite uh, quite a lot of software. So it's a major challenge for our uh, network technology provider. Um, for the centralized unit part, it's quite easy to, to take the software and port it. But for the decentralized distributed part, you need to rewrite. And, and so we need to, uh, to achieve a certain level of quality for massive MIMO, for uh, cell edge coverage, for, and we are still not there. So we continue a uh, different test with different uh, um, technology provider, and at the same time, we investigate a different new infrastructure with accelerator, with hardware accelerator, to uh, be able to continue to give to our customer the best of the technology. We have been the number one quality player on 4G. We are now number one quality in 5G, for example, in market like Spain or, or, or France. And we want, of course, Cloud One to contribute there to have a better quality when we will introduce it. The second aspect is topology. In Europe, um, you don't have the same topology, but in other markets like in, in America, in Asia, so you need quite a number of change of topology on your mobile network to be able to uh, centralize um, the baseband units so of the, the place where uh, you have all the signal transform and, and, and there it's quite a major evolution for us in terms of fiber topology. Of course, we have some advantage there because we are a number one fiber player in Europe. So we have a, a number of fiber available for that, but we need to change step by step the, the topology that are different for urban areas, for suburban or for rural areas. So some in potential introduction on Cloud Run could be more on uh, indoor coverage on some special project in, in the start and then move progressively inside our network when the technology will be stable during the decade. Okay, excellent. Yeah, it's, it's, it's absolutely critical, the fixed infrastructure for the ongoing development of 5G. Uh, that, that should not be forgotten. Uh, now, of course, the expectation also is that any edge cloud deployment would also be able to support multiple services and use cases. Uh, but is that the reality? Uh, can the same edge nodes support VRAN as well as managed enterprise services, virtual broadband network gateway instances and more? 
or is that still in the future? Uh, it's not the case today. So we still have a number of steps to, to be able to have different network elements like RAN and core on the same infrastructure or between telco cloud and application cloud on the same infrastructure. Uh, perhaps we do some progress uh, on the private network segment where we have a, a smaller scale where we can already put a number of elements and a number of applications in the uh, customer edge uh, platform. So I think we'll have progress there and then step by step more on the uh, telco um, cloud part where we will be able on some platforms to share a bit this in infrastructure. The first step for us is to share all the uh, 5G chain that we have to, to, to change uh, from um, 5G core for 5G signaling for different software element for the internet exit. So it's where we'll have, I think, more progress uh, in uh, 2022, 2023. Okay, yes, that makes a, a lot of sense. Now, you, you mentioned uh, private networks there. Uh, what is Orange's strategy with regards to private 5G demand from enterprises? It's quite a, a mature market now. We have a full portfolio inside our, our Orange Minus Services uh, unit, uh, where we are able today to address different needs, different private needs, either on the public network, and now on private networks, and we have a number of deals under deployment, but as well, and it's uh, the spirit of the 5G SA step to mix a bit between the private and the public operator to be able to leverage on the uh, public network investment to just add what is needed to exit the traffic on uh, um, business sites or on industrial sites. So I think we are mature on the public one, on the private one, and we start to be mature on this hybrid approach that could perhaps give flexibility to our customer, but as well leverage on the investment, because uh, if not, it's still a bit costly to deploy uh, private networks, if uh, except on some big industrial sites. Yes, that seems to be the, the starting point for, for many of these uh, private network deployments. It's going to be interesting to see how that develops, and I'm sure we'll hear a lot about that uh, during MWC this year. Uh, now, what role, if any, will public cloud platforms play in Orange's radio access network future? Um, it's, it's a good question because, um, you know, for the telco cloud, we have some specificities in terms of resiliency, in terms of availability, and um, in terms of cyber security. So for us, we are testing different um, uh, cloud platform. Um, we have um, as well an experimental network that is fully automatized with 5GSA, that is called PKO, our experimental network program where we test a number of uh, infrastructure, and as well if we are able uh, for Europe to design a, a good telco cloud infrastructure that can uh, be secure, resilient, and can import the different function. Um, at the same time, as I explained for RAN, we have some hardware acceleration um, um, capability that we need to, to, to add, and there, there are still a lot of uh, chipset compute system that are under development right now and that should reach some maturity inside 2022-2023. Okay, uh, excellent. Um, now, you mentioned the experimental network there. Um, and in, in addition to that, Orange unveiled its Open RAN Integration Center in Paris in November 2021. Are there any insights or developments you can share from the ongoing work at that facility? Uh, we have good track on the open run on three subjects. One, the first one, we want to have a better solution, for example, for sharing networks for indoor and, and rural. But by the way, there are some specifications that are under finalization in the Oran Alliance for that in, in 2022. We want as well, and it's normal to have the best cloud run uh, perspective and to have the best technologies there. And the last pillar for us, it's around the uh, automation, the zero touch, where we have quite a number of parameters with a 5G massive MIMO. Uh, and it's normal because you have, uh, you don't cover everywhere, a, every time, but just at the time it's used and the place it's used. So you have quite a software perspective there and parameter setting. 
and uh, we need to introduce new capabilities there for uh, to automate this parameter to achieve um, a, a better uh, experience. And as well, for with the slicing, we'll have to automate that for our B2B customer. But at a certain point of time as well, to have different quality of services and security for different objects, for different applications on the same object. So we are really on this journey with a, a, a dozen of partners uh, that we put together from the beginning in this uh, uh, Oran Integration Center. And we are following uh, this uh, free pillar a better shared network, Cloud Run, and um, um, a RIC, Radio Intelligent Controller. Okay, so a lot of key areas of development around Open RAN there, which of course is still in its early days as well. So Arno, thanks for joining us today, giving us an update on what Orange is doing in 5G, and uh, look forward to seeing you on the show floor in Barcelona. Thanks, Ray, and uh, we will be very pleased to show you uh, our 5G demos on our Orange booth in Barcelona. See you.